quick. I've got a set of screenshots. I'll show you how, how the tooling actually works, and then we can get into the, um, to the actual scenarios. This is supposed to be a hands-on sort of exercise. So I guess we'll sort of see how it goes. Have you seen the exercises that we did, the, um, the, the um, Word document that shows what the exercises are? No? OK, so it's, uh, as I say, it's part of the, uh, part of the Clean, Clean Fire set of, um, uh, of products, educational tool, number of mod modules. We're going to use the Conman Graph Builder. Now, um, some of you, I think, were in the previous session. Uh, and when you were there, I showed a graph, uh, which is, okay, that guy over there. Um, so one of the things about fire is, is I, I presume you know, is that if you want to do something sort of useful with fire, uh, you take your resources and you connect them all together using the, re the reference element into something which we call a graph of resources. So this is really all about building that graph. That's the URL to the tool. Uh, feel free to go in there and um, call it up. Um, later on, as I say, once, once I've done the preliminary stuff, we'll, uh, I'll, I'll let you loose and we'll see how things go. When you do get in, um, you'll come up with a login box like this. Uh, you just, it's a real pity that the data show, the um, pointer doesn't work. Um, but you can see, uh, if, you've, if you've already been in there before, you can type in your name. If you haven't, you click on that register as new user, uh, you type your name in, and you go for it. By the way, if you do have troubles as you're doing this, um, hold on for a second. I'll work my way through the presentation, and then I'll come around and, and deal with any issues that might occur. Who's been to a connectathon? A real connectathon? Oh, wow, cool. So you, some of you will have seen this before. Um, that's where all the different tracks that we do are down there. And the tracks have got a number of scenarios. Uh, we're going to go, um, you'll notice that when the, um, I've highlighted the problem list there, and there's a uh, third tab from the top called Graph Builder, um, which is that guy right there. And you go into that, uh, into that Graph Builder place, and what you can then do is you can start building the graphs against the particular use cases. So in this case, it's a simple problem list. Uh, in this screenshot, I've already put some resources in there. I'll work you through that in just a second. Uh, here is where you... Uh, select your actual resources, you click that little, uh, in this case I asked for a condition over there, I click on that link and it uh, lets me enter in the name of my condition, so I put that there. Uh, if you've already got a reference in, the, uh, in, the, um, uh, in your graph, then you can uh, say to just a reference to that one, or you can add a new one if you want to. Entering information against a particular resource, uh, you click the uh, link down there that's highlighted. I will run you through this in real life, by the way. This is just a kind of summary. Um, and here is where I've asked to enter in the uh, name of a patient here. So it's pulled up the patient name data type. You're familiar with data types? Data types are really quite important. Um, so in this case, this is a human name data type, so it's called up a screen for human name. You can enter in your details and save it there. If it's coded data, then it works against a terminology server, uh, and you enter in the, uh, the, the, the thing that you're looking for, ASPA in this case, blah, blah, blah. terminology operations uh, to call the data set. That's the hide show element there. And that's what the JSON looks like um, as we're building it. And that's what that looks like. I think I should probably go and do it in real time, which will make a lot more sense. So why don't I go and do that? Uh, so, I go into, okay, so here we are, that's the, um, uh, that's the front page, that's the link that's just through there. I'm going to just, I'm sorry? That's that one there. Oh, I see, okay, yep, sure, yeah, no worries, hold on. Um, oh, hold on, how about if I... That doesn't make any bigger, does it? Um, okay, it was... You seeing that? Okay, so... Well, I'll just... Um, okay, so that's what you should be seeing. Um, I have noticed some issues with, uh, with connectivity. Um, I actually had to reboot my machine. Um, it's a Mac machine at Microsoft. I suppose I should have uh, just assumed that that would happen. Um, 
so I, I'll carry on, and uh, if you're having ongoing troubles after this, I'll um, I'll uh, I'll come give you a hand. I'm just going to log out, and I'll pretend I'm coming as a new person. I'm going to call myself um, Dave Presenter, like so. Okay, so I now log in. Oh goodness, we've got 12 people have already come in, which is great. Uh, I should actually say this is a public server. Everything you type in here is up on the interweb, anybody can see it. So one, if that bothers you, don't do it. Uh, second is please, 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 no real clinical information up there for fairly obvious reasons. Um, so I've, uh, I, I am now uh, absolved of any, any, uh, any lawsuits that might occur. Not that it happens in the US, you know, so I'm, I'm not worried about that at all. Um, so you go into here, then you select the track. I'm going to start with a simple one, which is the problem list like so. So when I do that, I get a description of the list over down through here. Uh, it, I've got the list of the various scenarios that, um, that I can do. Uh, and I've got a number of things I can look at, but the one I'm going to do is I'm going to go to this graph builder here. So this was that second presentation. So when I go into there, like so, um, I get this screen here. If I had more than one scenario in my uh, track, which I can set up, um, then um, I could select the scenario that I wanted. Uh, I've only got one, so it comes up by default. Uh, and that's, as you can see, highly detailed requirements. I'm sorry, is that, uh, I are you sure I can, I can make it a bit, um, is that, yeah, I I'm sorry, I should have checked. Are you guys, are you, at the back, can you see this or not? I can make it bigger if there's an issue, okay. Um, Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, I'm going to build a uh, I'm going to build a graph of problem list. So, would anyone like to suggest what sort of resource I should be adding for problem list? Patient. Okay, uh, that was a selective hearing. I, I think I heard patient. Um, so, over the side here under core resource types number four, you'll see a list of of, uh, of types. Now, if, again, if you were in my uh, presentation just gone. Um, when you think of resources, there's two sorts of resources. There's a type and there's an instance. So the type is the definition. That's actually the guy that's up there. The instance is when you start building something from that type and adding data to it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the patient type and I'm going to create an instance out of it. And I do that by clicking on there. Uh, I then give it a short name. This is just a name so I can see it on my graph. Uh, that's going to be John, John, oops, John Doe. Okay, so I've now added a, uh, a, a, a single resource instance to my graph. Okay, what else do I want? It's a problem list. Condition. Yep, let's add a condition. So uh, there is condition right there. So I click on condition. I'm going to make it asthma because I know asthma works. Well, it worked when I tested it out this morning, so we'll see. Like so, on asthma. Okay, I've now got two resource instances in my, in my graph. There's a number of ways you can look at the graph. The one that I'm showing you right now is just a simple list. And it's got a number of useful things that we'll see in a minute. But what's quite a lot more fun is the graph. So that's, of course, the stuff that we've been looking at before. So. Um, we've, got our, we've got our two resources here. I need to hook them up. Anybody have any thoughts as to what the best next step is? I want to I connect these two um, resources together. I want to say that this, uh, that this um, asthma is for John Doe. How am I going to do that? Um, under the hood, yes, there will be a patient ID. To reference, thank you, which from where to where? Ah, gotcha. No. Um, this is actually a uh, resources, it, it's, it's a good, 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 um, good guess. Resources always go one way. They go from one thing to another thing. They do not go back the other way. In the case of this case, what we say, and it's actually from condition to patient rather than patient to condition. You can infer it, because it's, it's directional, so it's got to go one way. But of course, you can, you can you know, truck backwards if you want to. So I'm going to do that. So I'm going to select my condition resource there like so. Now, as soon as I select that, over on this right-hand side there comes the, um, 
all of the elements inside of condition. And as we'll see in a minute, we can actually add new data to it as we want to. Now what's happened behind the scenes, again in my previous talk I talked about profiling. So part of profiling is there are specific resources in FHIR for representing what these types look like, whether they're core types or whether they're profiled types. So what the tool has done is it's made a call to a FHIR server, uh, it's asked for the structure definition, which is what the resource is called, for condition, and it's brought it back down again. So that's how it's able to generate that list. It's dynamically generated in real time from the FHIR resources. Uh, and we see here, this will look, if you were to go into the specification, you will see exactly these, uh, these elements. And in particular, I'm going to go down to this one right here, which is the subject. So what I'm going to say is I'm going to say that the subject of this condition is the patient. Um, you'll see that it's required. This is the multiplicity in there, so you've got to have one of them. Uh, so if I click on that patient link right there, like so, this is where it comes up and it says, okay, this is a, a reference to patient. Are there any patients in the graph? Yes, there are. Do you want to link to that patient? Uh, generally, depending on the order that you put things in, I'm just going to say yes. And so I now have a, oops, there we go. And it moves around and does sorts of fun things like that. So, but I've now set up uh, a, a problem, asthma, uh, to a patient. So I'm now going to, I'm going to add another problem because just one is boring. So I'll go to condition, diabetes, like so. And then I'm going to go to my diabetes condition and I'm going to link them up to my patient, like that. Right, okay, so I've got two, two conditions, both linked to the patient. Uh, I want to do a patient list. Um, what do I need next, or am I done? There's a valuable prize for the person who gets this right. I want a list resource. Excellent, I give myself the prize. Uh, actually, there wasn't one anyway, so this kind of gets rid of all sorts of embarrassment. Um, so I want to add a list. Now, incidentally, if you're a bit unclear, there's a couple of things you can do in here. Uh, remember that the spec is your friend. It is here. Uh, the resources tab, that one is probably the most useful. As we click on that, then we get a list of all of the resources. So these are all the resources uh, that we've got in fire. Uh, I prefer the alphabetical list just because I'm, I know what the names are. Uh, the categorized list though is quite handy. So this is where um, you know, we want to look at the list resource and we can see there um, that the purpose of the list is for an ordered collection of records. So it sort of sounds like this is what we're after. A lot of these patterns, by the way, or patterns of use, aren't absolutely fixed in the spec. In fact, they're not fixed in the spec. Um, you decide how you want to join things together. There are sort of ways of doing things that a lot of people, would, uh, you know, are common patterns, but, but it's, not, uh, it's not required. While I was there, sorry, I noticed one thing. Again, I, I talked about this previously, that little number right there. That's the maturity level of it. So in FHIR, we have this concept of resource maturity. Uh, and the higher that number, the more mature it is, which means the more that it's been exercised, which means that it's least likely to change between versions. The N means it's normative, uh, and that means that if we make any changes to it, they'll be backwards compatible. But anything which isn't an N can change between versions. I need to watch out for that. Um, but meanwhile, back to my thing here. So I want to add in a list resource. Now, you'll notice I've been selecting these resources from this predefined list at the top, which I, I set up as part of the track. Um, so that was just to make it convenient, so I didn't, have to, uh, I didn't have to go in and select the ones that I wanted. But you can select any resource, just that select direct link there. And again, it, it's got the list of graphs, a uh, list of resources. You can add any one to your graph that you want. Um, so, and I will point out that the tool, so the specification defines the kind of references you can make. That, speci that, that specification is embodied in the structure definition resource. The tool reads that, so it won't let you make an invalid connection. Or if it does, it's a bug, and I probably need to know about it. So what I'll now do is I'll now make a list. 
I'm going to say it's a problem list, like so. I'm going to add that. So I now have my list. Okay, what should I do next? The short answer is you actually don't. Um, and it depends, there's actually quite a lot of discussion going on in the community at the moment. The kind of way I like to think about it is that uh, if you, it's really for a curated list. It's being able to, you sit down, you say, here are the list of patients. And that, that's when you'd mostly use it. Because if we go and look at that list resource there, like so, we'll see it's got things like when the list was done, who did it, all that kind of stuff. So you get that for it. And the other thing is, in an EHR system, you might have a whole lot of problems that you've added in over the years. You know, do you really just want to haul all of those problems back out again? The list is a grouper mechanism. It's not required, just one way of doing it. It's just another resource that you have to manage. Well. And if your condition is properly coded, you can actually search for directly for the condition. You can search for it, but as I say, imagine you've got an EHR and you've got so, 10 years of patient records. You know, you might have um, 30 or 40 different conditions. Which of those are significant? Remember, you're building a list. Anyway, I, I'm happy to talk about in detail afterwards, but yeah, yeah, no, it's an interesting question. Um, so no one's yet decided what we're going to do next, which means we're going to be stuck here for the rest of the session saying absolutely. I'm sorry? It does. Let's, it does a couple of things. Okay, I'll, uh, I'll sort of move on. Need to state you're absolutely right. That's the coded data, and I'll come back to that one in a second. But right now, what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to take my problem list, and I'm going to say that the subject of that problem list is the patient. And then I'm going to add a, I've got to add the condition to the problem list. So I'll go down through here, and, uh, oops, I better select the list first. Um, and I go to the entry element, and then I go, I add that to uh, a resource to it, I'm going to add asthma to it, to now get that connection down through there. Now, if I lost you a little bit in there, what you can do, what's sort of helpful, is if we go back to our list view here, um, you'll see we have, against each entry in the list, we have a question mark. If you click on that question mark, it brings up this, the uh, specification of the list. So that's how I knew that that's what the actual entry was that I wanted to make the reference to. So I've now got, uh, oh and there by the way, as you can see different views do different things. So this one tells me for example that my list has got a, um, a reference to, the, uh, to John Doe as the subject and it's got a reference to the um, asthma uh, condition as the, <coughs> excuse me, as one of the entries. I do kind of like this graph myself, graph view. So the next thing I want to do is I want to add um, diabetes to my problem list. So in other words, I want two entries on my problem list. If we go back to that list resource through here, effectively, so these are all the, all the items. As, as I said, they'll match up with what's in the tool. Um, I need to add another one of these guys. It's not to many, so I can have as many as I want. So if I go back into the tool here, and I go down to problem list, you'll see there's a little plus icon alongside that. Uh, I'm just going to collapse that to make it easier. If I click on the plus icon, I now get another entry resource. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, not an entry resource. I now get another entry element. Again, always remember, Instance versus type. We're in an instance here. We're doing stuff with a real thing. So I'll drop that guy down. I'll go to item. Uh, incidentally, the reason why it's come up with the list of resources is because the type of the reference was to resource, i.e. anything. So therefore, the tool can't make any kind of guess as to what you want to reference to, so therefore, you get to choose. We've already added asthma. I'll add diabetes. And there we go. So that's a simple problem list. That's what it would look like in Fire, assuming you were using the list resource. But of course, there's actually no data in them just yet. All we've done is the references bit. So to actually add data to it, 
Uh, again, we do that over down through here. So I'll start with the patient. So I select the patient. Uh, again, I get my elements down through here. Uh, I'll go to the name by clicking on that link there. Notice how the data type is human name. So I click on name, and I then get the, uh, I, the possible values for, for human name. So I'm going to say that it's, uh, I forget what I actually typed in before, but I usually use John Doe, so I'll stick with that, like so. I click on Save. And so I've now added John Doe, I, I, so I'm sorry, I've added the name to my patient resource. And I can see what my resource looks like. If I scroll up the top here, this is what it looks like on the wire. So this is, this is in JSON format rather than XML format because it's a web app and JSON works well with web. But there you can start to see the actual elements coming in as they would be exchanged. So this is what's going to go out on the wire for this particular patient. Um, if I go back into my, oh, and what I can also do is I can validate to see how well I'm doing so far. So if I click on that validate button, okay, what happens again behind the scenes uh, is that the application invokes the validate operation, and the validate operation, which you can see in the spec, in fact, let's go and look at the spec just for fun. So if we go to operations, there's validate. So this is the validate, that's the actual URL I used. Uh, and indeed, if I, just for fun, if I um, go to view developer and uh, what am I wanting to do, uh, developer tools, oh, it's going to take up too much space. I was going to say, if you wanted to, if you go down to the network tab here, you'll see these calls being made in real time, if you're interested in that sort of stuff. Um, so what this is doing is this is called the validate operation against patient, it passed the patient instance across. The server that I'm using, which is the happy, uh, happy server in this case, um, ran the validation operation uh, and came back with, um, with these warnings. They're only warnings, so I can ignore them. It's basically saying you should have a text in here. When, when you get into Fire for real, uh, particularly if you are creating uh, resources, the validate operation is your friend. You really should know it, because one of the hard things to know is if you've created something, how do you know that it's right? So the validate operation will tell you. Okay, so I have um, added my resources. I've linked them up together. I've started to add clinical, uh, clinical information to them. Um, the one last little thing I'll just um, tell you before we knock ourselves out is um, coded data. So when I created my, my asthma, you'll see that I, um, if I look at that resource instance, it's, it's, it's pretty basic at the moment. So there's no coded information in here. Uh, if I want to add coded information, uh, again, I want to go to the code resource here. Uh, again, remember, if I get confused, if I'm not sure, I can always go to the spec and read through and figure out what it is that I, I need to do. Uh, but I know I want to go to code. So I click on that. Now, this is, this is using another fire operation. In fact, in many ways, what this tool is doing is showing how you can use the operations to, uh, to build up a UI. I, I mean, I'm the developer of this. All I've got to do is to send off a URL. The, the stuff behind the scenes, which is a lot more complicated, gets done by much, much cleverer people. I want to, I want to search. I want to find asthma in the terminology. Incidentally, there's the value set right there. Uh, and again, you may remember that all, uh, all coded elements in Fire are bound to a terminology via a value set. So the value set's the selector mechanism. So that's that guy there. Uh, it's an example binding. That's the terminology server I'm using. So I'm actually using a different server for doing the uh, terminology lookups. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm using one called uh, Onto Server. Uh, incidentally, there's a presentation by a guy called Jim Steele, who's the developer of Onto Server <coughs> somewhere here. If you look up terminology, you'll find it. So it's worth going to. You'll go into a lot more about terminology. But what I want to do is I want to find asthma, like so. Click on search. <coughs> and again, it's made that call. It's called the um, uh, expand operation in this case against the terminology server. 
and the expand operation uh, just says give me all of the concepts inside of this value set which have got the name ASPA and this is what it's come back with. Uh, it's SNOMED in this particular case so I can do a, I can select the one that I want I'm going to say I'm going to make this this is actually acute asthma and so what's happened now is I've selected acute asthma and what it's done is it's made another uh, operation call, terminology call, dollar lookup in this particular case and dollar lookup returns information about a particular concept and in particular it returns any parents which this concept has got and any children which this concept has got. So therefore I can use this in a crude way to navigate up the tree. So I can say well actually it's an asthma of some sort maybe I had it wrong. So if I click on asthma here okay, I now get a rather bigger list. So I can traverse up and down the up and down the SNOMED tree as I want to. This of course works with SNOMED, it doesn't, uh, doesn't necessarily work with, um, uh, with, with, with all terminologies. And by that what I mean is that the operation itself, the, um, the dollar, I'm sorry, the um, terminology search will look with any, will work with any, uh, uh, any terminology. This sort of hierarchical stuff only works with terminologies that have a hierarchy, um, such as, uh, as SNOMED. So I'll uh, save that. And so I've now added uh, this code now. So my, uh, my resource is starting to look a little bit healthier. So I've got a subject and I've got a, uh, I've got a code. I just want to validate on it. I'm missing a couple of things. Um, the um, text. Um, the text, by the way, the, the, all resources have got a text element. Best practice is that you put something in that text element and that it is uh, something that you could display to a human which describes the sort of meaning of that resource. So it should be clinically safe to show the text to, uh, to a human. It's not required in FHIR because there are use cases where humans aren't involved, machine to machine um, communication, so therefore the text isn't necessarily all that helpful. Neither do we make any statement other than the fact of clinically safe in terms of what's in it. So um, it doesn't have to be complete, it should be clinically safe. There are ways of indicating whether or not you, um, whether you've got more structured data than's in the text and vice versa. Look at the text element and you'll see what I mean. But it, it's an optional thing. But what isn't optional, ah, okay, that's actually, unfortunately, this is a bug in the, um, in the happy library that I've been nagging James to fix. So um, that's an error. But I do know, as if I go back to my thing here, I do know that I need to add a clinical status. Um, if I click on search, incidentally if um, you, you can do a search with just with nothing in the search box, if you do that against a, um, a big value set you'll sit there for quite a while waiting for something to happen, um, I, so I'd be cautious about that. I'm going to say that this is inactive and save. I've now got inactive, and I'm going to put the verification status uh, there. Yes, yes, everything comes from the terminology server. So we have different terminology In this particular case, that's just my tool. Um, that's completely up to up to how you develop your app. But yes, I, I did it that way. Uh, In my, sorry, not quite understanding. You can have this uh, files that you can import to your yep. Spotify installation, so it would get the same Yes, yeah, 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 yeah. I, I can, in fact, uh, I haven't done it because I had to upgrade my machine, but I can download a copy of Happy onto my machine yeah. uh, and run the server locally, and yes, I can import my, um, my SNOMED files and import them into that. What I actually want to ask is the terminology server by itself is also a Oh yes, well, the, put it this way, it exposes a fire interface. Okay. What's behind the scenes, I don't know, don't care. Okay. Um, it's the interface that matters, and that's the terminology service. Yep. So when you are doing your, you call the search, it's invoking a search fire operation, and then, then you click on it, it invokes a lookup fire operation. These are standard fire operations. Exactly. Working on the terminology service. Exactly, exactly so. And if you want to know more about those, the best place to go, um, if we go to there. So that's the, 
That's the uh, that talks a lot more about terminology. That's the interactions you'll see the. But also this in the context of fire, you were using another server. That's why. It was not uh, yes, that's right. That's right. The interface. It's a, it's all about the interface. Yeah. yeah. Um, so if I now go back and I'll say I just choose something at more or less at random. Uh, I've got a feeling this uh, we're still going to have issues with the uh, validation, but we'll see. Yeah. Um, yeah, as I say, there's a, there's a bug in there that, um, that we haven't got. But um, Okay, so that's really what I wanted to show. Um, are there any, as I say, the, 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 the purpose of the session really was just to show you how the tooling works and to let you run away and, and do it yourself. Uh, the tool is available, it's, it's just there. It's on this, you know, you can use it whenever. It'll stay up there for uh, probably ever. Uh, so you can use it whenever you want to, feel free to show other people it. If you get any bugs or problems or issues with it, then let me know um, via the, uh, the, the fire chat. Do you guys all know the fire chat? Sorry. Sorry, I'll, actually let me, let me just show you the chat and I'll come back to you in a sec. So if you aren't already in the fire chat, it's chat.fire.org, like so. So this is the um, uh, this is the interface. We'll wait for it to catch up. Um, it, it is a very busy site. Uh, I I cleared it about three days ago, and as you can see, there's almost 700 messages that I haven't actually read. It can be totally overwhelming. When you start, you'll only be subscribed to a couple of uh, a couple of streams, and that's usually the implementer stream, which is this guy down through here. Uh, if you want to subscribe to other streams. You go to this little icon, like so, uh, and then here are, here are the other streams that you can um, uh, subscribe to. The, you know, these ones I've subscribed to, sorry, these are my current ones. There are the all streams, and as you can see, there's a, there's a fair number of them. So select the ones that you're interested in. Um, I tend to keep an eye on the uh, ClinFire chat, which is, uh, let's cancel that guy which is uh, right there. So if you have any issues or bugs or anything like that, just, just pop something off the chat and uh, I'm usually reasonably quick about getting back to it. Um, yeah, So, but regardless of what you do, whether you're doing this, this stuff or not, um, do sign up to the chat. And again, I emphasize this, don't be backwards about asking questions, okay? It, it, it's funny, you might think it's a real dumb question, but often, Questions coming from people that aren't in the, in the weeds are actually quite profound and uh, have triggered a lot of debate. And the, the site itself, we have real strict rules. Uh, there's no flaming, there's no nastiness. No one's going to come back and say, this is the stupidest question in the history of stupid questions. Uh, or if they do, they'll be bumped off, so don't worry about it. I'm sorry, you had a question, sir? I did for a while, but I, I've kind of stopped. Um, if you're really interested, let me know. I, I, it's more, it's something which has grown organically over the last three or four years, so it would be kind of hard to do much with it. Um, I, I, I say it's free, it'll always be free. If you wanted to do more, let me know and we can certainly talk. Yeah. So I went to the Clean Fire launcher. There's a bunch of different uh, like yep. patient beaver server. The tool that we're looking at, <coughs> which one did you look at? Is the patient beaver, the server? Okay, so um, I have to I have to own up here and say that the I actually I've got two <coughs> separate sets. I'm kind of migrating away from Clinfire into the comment stuff because it's newer, um, and it's also it's got a couple of features which are quite nice for a circumstance like this. So if you go, you were going into there. Okay, so at the moment I don't have a link to this site directly from here. What well, is kind of handy, so you kind of reminded me of it, so I'll just show you while I'm in here. One thing which is kind of useful is this patient viewer is quite good. Again, you go, I should actually, sorry, before I go there. So we've kind of gone off track a little bit, but, but, but what the heck. Um, so those are the data servers, um, or the data server there. We talked about different servers. So the data server is where the data is stored. So if I, I'm on ClinFire R3, uh, if I go to the patient viewer, and select a patient, and type in a name. My memory isn't all that good, so I use my name for everything. Um, go to Matilda Hay, 
so these are what's this is another operation that's been called. This is the um, everything operation. So these are all the resources for um, for Matilda Hay, and I can look at them in detail. So for example, I can go to the list. There's a problems list. Um, I can see the details of the list resource. This lets me look at it in JSON or XML, but also I can see the references. So again, it dynamically builds those references, and I can see that I've got the list resource here has got the reference to condition resources. That's another way of viewing data, and I can move around so I can select that, uh, that condition, and I can now see that the condition has got inward references from a list and from some encounters where that condition was looked at, and outward uh, links to the patient. Uh, and then I can do fun things like create encounter timelines as when I saw a patient and, and um, yeah, what do they have and such like. So this is really just kind of playing and having fun with, with fire. No, yep. The one I've just shown you? Yeah. So I, that, that was because the, again, I used an operation. The operation was dollar everything against patient, and, and that bought me all the resources. And so once I've got all the resources, I've got all of their references. So it's an easy matter for me to say, I've got, uh, I just look at the condition resource, say, it's got a resource to patient, um, it's got an ID on it, uh, an identify, an ID on it, yeah. and I found the patient with that ID and drew it. So you basically built it after you got all the resources? Yeah, in this particular in this, yeah, well, it's, again, it's, it's a good point because we, the fire is a, is a platform spec. It lets you do whatever you want to. That's up to you. If you want to do stuff which is expensive, knock yourself out. If you didn't want to do that, there's a lot more that you can do. And in this particular case, a reverse include is the kind of thing that you might be interested in. Uh, and to look at that sort of stuff, uh, go to uh, the spec, like so. Go to uh, what do I want. What do I want. Um, exchange. Thank you. Yeah. REST API and uh, search. Actually, probably is a better way. Yeah. And you'll and you'll see the difference. And a reverse include that would allow me to say, um, you know, give me all the resources that have a reference to patient. Okay. Yeah. If I didn't want to do that. Um, in theory, you should be, if Cynthia exposes an interface, it should be possible to add it as a service and link to it. Um, I haven't tried that recently. Um, it won't generate a bulk, right? I'm sorry? So it won't generate a bulk data set, right? I can create the, like you said, all the mapping. Yeah. But then let's say if I want to have generate it. it, 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 in, it in theory, it should work. I think when you're saying templates, you mean resources, don't you? When you add resources into Cynthia? I would say like, like how uh, Cynthia can generate like uh, over a span of five years. Yeah. Patients. Yeah. So let's say if I do something similar, like create one uh, patient's flex cycle in your tool, then I can take that part and you can put it there so that generates That's tricky. Um, uh, probably not. That's not the purpose of the tool. The tool's not designed to, other than for a demonstration, other, you know, to, to, to author instances to put into Cynthia. So I doubt that that would work. It should be able to read resources that are already in Cynthia, it, provided that Cynthia is pulling out, it's not pushing back. Yep. Yep. Is there an easy way to go from your scenario to an implementation guide? Like I implemented what I need to do, now I need to create an official IG with profiles and stuff? Um, I would recommend that you go to the session, I think is uh, first in this afternoon, because I'm going to it, on the implementation guides. Okay. Implementation guides, on the one hand, are a really, really neat idea. You know, they bring everything into one place, as I think you know, um, all the documentation, downloadable. They are a pig to create. Yeah, that's uh, why, I mean, I tried this way, and then I... Yeah. I, better. Yeah, I'm not... In, uh, yeah, I thought about it. Um, profiling under the hood... Conceptually, it's really great. Yeah. It gets a bit messy in some places under the hood, so I kind of tend to leave that to the experts. Because, like, I think you have this nice table on the right, so mm. you basically can do kind of simple profiling there already. Yeah. Like removing the fields that you don't need, and then yeah. you kind of help on the way that just. That's, there's a different tool that does that kind of stuff. Um, Again, uh, from my perspective, it's, it's, it's what, what, where's the bang for the buck, you know, uh, um, not with any dollars involved, but, you know, it's, it's intended to be a training tool. I am, there's another tool inside of, um, 
We're kind of going all over the place, by the way. You, you guys help us. I, I suggest you have a play. Um, we'll just kind of carry on talking about stuff that comes up. If you've got any questions, just, just let me know, but we'll, we'll flip to wherever, we, wherever life takes us. Um, if we go to, so in New Zealand, for example, um, so we're building resources for, um, for uh, a directory project. So what we're doing is we're actually creating a model like this. So this is using a different tool, it's a modeling tool. Uh, so these are, these are what we sat down with the uh, business people and said, what information do you need? And we just whacked them in there. So they had things like, um, they wanted to add the original, original um, uh, was it? The original value to gender. And they wanted to add uh, to name, we had to add source is preferred. So what this does is um, this, it's, it's a designer tool. Um, and so what I'm able to do is I'm able to link these in. So I can use this tool to sit down with the business users, figure out what their, their, their needs are, and then I can go away, link them into the profiles that I need to actually generate the implementation guide. So that, that's what that tool does. But again, it's, I, I built it for our own purposes, so it may or may not work for you. If you want to have a play with it, let me know. And just, incidentally, if you want to, after this again, if you want to reach out to me for anything, use that, um, that, that, that chat.fire.org Clinfire site, and I hang out on that. A what, sorry? So if I don't know that there is an in C subdomain, I would never type it. So do we have a directory somewhere which says that's the New Zealand? Oh, that was that was an interface I, I built just for our project. Okay. <laughs> it was an easy way to get to the site. I, I could have the the way I I, I guess I, I the, there is a lot of knowledge. There's well, it's kind of sort of built up over the years, but yeah. But the, if you go to the logical modeler, you'd get there as well. Uh, and then I could go to um, what to call it NH NH. Oh, no. I, it's not sitting here. Um, it's, in, it's in here somewhere. Okay. That's why I kind of did it that way. Yep. Any other questions? Yep. The purpose of the tool, is it like for uh, production and use of kids or just education? It's education. It's education. It's, it's, it's so that, it's just as, as we, I mean, it, visualizing this stuff. I'm, I'm a kind of visual sort of person. So it's one thing to sit down and, and say, you have these resources and here's how you link them together. I think being able to link them, being able to visualize something is important. The other thing which I found it to be useful for is if I'm not sure what resources I need for a something, then I'll just create a, a, a little scenario. And you can do it yourself and create your own scenarios in here. And then I just throw resources in there until it, you know, I, I figure I've got everything that I actually need. So it helps in that design phase as well. Okay, well, um, if you want me to sing out, it's a, it's a practical let's code day. Looks like people have decided that there's better things than lunch. <laughs> lunch. <laughs> Supposed to finish. Yeah. Quick question. So, uh, the, as you said, the visually you can build this. Is there a programmatic way of doing it too? Like, let's say if I want to generate like 100 of such cases, can I write code and kind of go through your APIs, linking them, and then kind of put it up in the visual tool so that I can do it a little more quickly? I haven't done that. What I did do, and I haven't implemented in this particular application, is the ability to pull in a bundle. Yeah, I was going to ask you about bundle too, but I thought... Yeah, maybe. yeah no, no, no. no. Um, again, let me know if you're interested, because in the earlier version of this, you were able to take a bundle, pull a bundle, and it had all the resources in it. I haven't ported it into this app as yet. But that because I was, for one of my test cases, I was using the Cynthia stuff, but it generated so much stuff, yeah. I want to trim it down. So if, you know, I can probably use your stuff to import it and then kind of chop off what I don't need and then kind of replicate it there's for a, my... There's something else I'm playing with, I'll show it up on the screen there, that you might find useful. Um, so this was, uh, uh, gosh, um, oh, there it is, yeah. Oh, oh localhost, that's... Um, uh, 
managed to do it. Yeah, there we go. Oh, there's been 4.0. Yeah, well, this is, this is a completely different tool, right? So this is not the one I was showing you before. Um, but what this one does, and it might, it might do some of the things yeah. that you want to do. Um, Version of all this that you're doing, or is it all your? That's all mine, it's, but it's just up on the web, you know, anybody can, okay. uh, anybody can look at it. So, I think, where did I have it before? Let me just see. So, there's, there's a bundle which I, I built myself, sure. um, and I go into here, import that, import that bundle, okay, and I then can see the entries in the bundle down through there. So for each entry, I can see the resource details, but I can also go and generate the graph from, the graph from there. Yeah, yeah. Exactly what I wanted. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. Well, keep an eye on it. The other thing that's quite cool is that um, if you go to a particular, uh, have I got comp there we go. Forget it. You can actually see the graph just for. I'm sorry, wrong one. If I go to composition there, I can see the references just for that that, e that element. Or if I want to look at condition or encounter. So you're seeing the um, the references there. Um, that might that might suit your needs. I haven't set that up, but again, if, if what you want to do, I'll um, uh, I'll be I'll be blogging about this or have blogged about it. So this is my blog post is. Um, I think I've read some of this stuff. Oh, have you? Oh, cool. Okay, <laughs> that's good. Um, so and I did it just recently. I got the link to it. So if 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 you want to do other things. Um, like delete things, let, let me know because it, it doesn't take much to update sure, this. Sure. Yeah. Well, that's good. Thank you. No thank worries. You thank, you. Thank, thank you. Thank you very much. Great. Thank, thank you. you.